Have you ever looked at a picture like this and wondered how is it made? Does the person actually jump on their back and catch that photo in the air? Or is there a way to fake it without having to commit to a jump and maybe hurt yourself? Well, today I'm gonna to show you how to levitate yourself in Photoshop using three very simple steps. All right, first let's make a list of things you need. So number one, you need a tripod. Your phone or your camera or whatever you're taking the picture on needs to be perfectly still the whole time for every shot. So set it up on a tripod and then just leave it completely still. Don't touch it again. All right, the second thing you need is a stool or a chair or something to sit on that you can just levitate yourself on. You can position your body however you like, but just make sure you have a stool or a chair with you if you're gonna try this type of shot. No, stop, stop. The pose people tend to do most is they lie on their back like this and then they keep their feet in the air like this and act like you're falling. Remember, when you're up like this, you wanna look like you're floating, so you want to have like a bendy back. So this is a weird video, but like bend your neck back, bend your feet, kind of fall like this. And if you have any piece of clothing on you, like a jumper or anything, make sure it hangs over the front of the stool because if you're just lying on it, if I'm sitting on it like this and then I do a cut and I remove the stool afterwards, there's gonna be a straight line where I've removed the stool and no one has like a straight bone like that. So it's gonna look really weird. So you want to make sure that you're just half over the chair at the front, half overlapping. So when you cut it out, you can cut it out in the shape of your body from the side. So in terms of today's shoot, I've printed off loads of my photos on little prints. To make a levitation shot cool, you need to have some other elements to sell the fact that you're levitating. So what I've done before in like my autumn photography video, or other ones like that is I've thrown leaves in the air or I've had like a bit of motion or something like that. You need something extra to sell the floating effect. Even like if it's, if it's your coat, it's is flicking in the wind. It's just something that doesn't look like you're just lying on a chair. Something that makes it look like you actually jumped or you're actually floating up. So what I'm gonna do with these, I've printed them off. This was to celebrate 50K on Instagram. So everyone over on Instagram that supported me to 50K, you guys were awesome, really appreciate it. Yeah, it's just, it's just class. I'm really glad that so many people are like a fan of my work, even like just appreciate my work or following along. I appreciate everyone who comments, supports, everything like that. Anyway, so you don't hear too much about that, but I do appreciate it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna throw all these in the air as I'm just lying on my chair in whatever position. So I'm probably just gonna sit on my chair cross-legged and then throw these pictures in the air, take a picture. Now next, I'm gonna remove everything from the picture. And then you need to keep the camera in the exact same position and just take the exact same picture, but with everything gone, so you have a completely empty background. All right, so now it's time to edit your photos and it's a really easy editing process. The first technique I'm gonna say is gonna be the fastest but it's gonna be slightly more inaccurate. And the second technique is gonna take a little bit longer, but it's that little bit more accuracy in it. So first you open Photoshop and you bring your two images in. You can import them by dragging and dropping them or just going through the menu systems and opening them up. So the easy way to do them, all you do, you tap on your top image. As you can see, it's one image on top of another image. Tap on your top image, tap on this little icon down in the bottom corner, then go to the brush tool and basically on this brush tool, wherever you paint, it's gonna erase this top layer. You can change the brush settings to make them bigger, to make the brush smaller, to make it more feathered. There's loads of different preset options as well to choose from and play around and then just erase your areas. I always find I start with the hard edge and then after I've done my hard edge, I then go to a softer edge and tap along the hard edges of my erase so it doesn't look as sharp and it looks smooth. And the second option is gonna be using the pen tool. So all you do, you tap on your top layer, tap on this little pen tool, and then just zoom in and then touch on the screen every time you want to make a new point and just make a selection around the place you want to get rid of. If you tap and drag on your point, it means it's gonna make a curve. So if you want a hard line, just do a dot. But if you want a curved line, press on the screen and then drag your cursor around the place and it'll make a natural curve. And do this until you've covered all the area with the pen tool. We're gonna to go around the reflection because we don't want the reflection of the chair in the picture either. And once you have this outlined, right click on it and press make selection. Now if you go over to the paths section, you can see your path and you can press control and click on this to see the outline of your path and make sure to tap this thing up here and press subtract. Now once you press this, it's pretty easy to do. You go to the bottom here, tap on this icon, then tap on this icon straight after, and then it's gonna raise it for you. And as you can see, the difference between the background and foreground is slightly different because it was sunny for one and not sunny for the other, so the exposure was a bit different. And to do this, an easy way to do it is just to go through your settings. So go to adjustments, go to exposure, and then just drag your exposure up and down until it matches the background. And you can also feather out your mask a little bit more. I chose zero pixels 
for the edge of the mask there, but realistically you choose like five or six pixels. So that's exactly how to levitate yourself in Photoshop. It's a really cool photo idea to do whenever you're out and about, you're trying to come up with ideas, just be like, yeah, I'll levitate myself, that'll be a bit of fun. And yeah, it's good fun to play around with and everything. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to check out my other videos, I recommend this one here or this one here. Both of them aren't too bad. And tap in the middle for subscribe to this channel. So I appreciate you watching. See you soon.